Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're gonna do a special lineup, top 10 perfumes for Coachella, baby. You best believe it because I mean it is tis the season. As I'm filming, Coachella is happening. It's a two weekend affair, darling. Tickets are going sold out. The VIP tickets, the non VIP tickets, the prices are insane. People don't know where to sleep anymore. They sleep in the middle of the desert. What are you going to do? You can't shower, really. Not really, because I've been seeing that the queues are ginormous to just go wash yourself or anything. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Top 10 perfumes for Coachella? That's an interesting topic. So, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Decob all spelled together there for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. Um, this video is being filmed live in front of my patrons, by the way, and members. So I have my live chat here on the sidebar. You guys, are you ready for, for Coachella, baby? All right. So the first perfume. Okay, I want to say, like I already said in my intro, it's difficult to shower. I mean, if you take the base package and you have to queue up to shower in the morning or afternoon or to go to the loo in general, it's like, how do you stay clean? Everybody's pressed against each other in the desert with all the desert and the dust blowing into you. People are drinking. People are doing all sorts of substances. Everybody's, you know, drunk, wasted, falling on top of each other, sweating throughout the day. I'm telling you, it's a cesspool of germs, bacteria, viruses, STDs, you name it, it's all there, honey. It's all there. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? The French invented perfumes for a reason, for their so-called horse baths, when they don't really clean themselves with water, but they just kind of bathe with perfumes. I'm like, well, no better occasion than Coachella to actually utilize the reason and the purpose for which perfumes were originally invented, to cover up bad odors and perchance to disinfect a little bit. So the first one is suited for this particular purpose. You, you can't really go to the loo. You can't really wash up whenever you want. There's always lines. You got to wait for many, many hours to get to some sort of hygienic moment. So I would recommend for the first perfume, it's a combo. Perfume and deodorant. And that would be Pour Monsieur uh, Eau de Toilette and then the Pour Monsieur Deodorant Stick. I adore these. It keeps you fresh. It keeps you balanced. It's a gorgeous Chypre. There's bergamot in there. It is a clean, clean, clean fragrance. The perfume can also disinfect a little bit because it does have alcohol. And the deodorant, I love it. I use it all the time. So this one is also has also a little bit of alcohol in it. It's a deodorant stick. The cool thing about it is it does not stain you know, your shirts or what, what have you. So this is the deodorant I've been using for years. Love it to bits. Um, it's citrusy, bergamotty, fresh, not overpowering. You know, you need some water to freshen up a little bit and then you put this on. But listen, once you've done it, I know it's not the best option, but if you can't reach water throughout the day, this one has a little bit of alcohol in it. Just keep applying it <laughs> every hour or so. Just keep freshing yourself up. That I mean, listen, when at Coachella, do what Coachellians do. You know, you, you got to do what you can. So yes, it's a little bit chunky. Like you, where, to, where to carry this on yourself while you're kind of partying. Obviously, if you're going to wear something skimpy, you don't have a place where to put this. If you have a little bag with you, I highly recommend having a deodorant. And for the purpose, I'm showing you the 50 milliliter version of Pour Monsieur instead of the 100 ml. It's a little bit smaller, easier to carry. Yes, Chanel has discontinued the 50 ml, but you can still find it around from time to time. So that's to stay kind of perky and fresh and citrusy zesty. The second fragrance also falls into that category of freshening up. If you are on a bit of a budget because you spent a lot of money to get your tickets, your, to get your weekend pass for Coachella, you also, you know, don't want to spend a lot of money on your perfume, perhaps. But you still need something to freshen up throughout the day. I highly recommend this Cologne because uh, you can just kind of throw it on yourself like holy water or dab it on a tissue and then wipe yourself off and clean yourself. It has a little bit of alcohol as well. If you're not too susceptible to alcohol underneath your armpits and in the private bits, you could 
Be very careful, though, don't burn yourself, but you could wipe yourself in that area as well, armpits especially, uh, just to freshen up a little bit. If you are very delicate in those areas, I would not recommend doing it then because alcohol is aggressive. But if you're on a budget, this thing is amazing. It is the Cologne 4711. 4711. Jesus in the chat said Cologne 4711. Sherry said, I love 4711 and its flankers. I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. You can get it in a spray or in a splash. I have the splash here. You just kind of splash it all over. You rub it in and uh, it's really, it freshens you up. It keeps you fresh throughout the day. And it's not too overpowering if you're not the type of person who doesn't want to smell too strong for other people around you. This is really good. Keeps you clean and smelling fresh for yourself. So you can bear the hours and hours on end of partying at Coachella of all the gigs, but it doesn't break the bank, right? Sometimes on Amazon, I even find this for like $4, $5. So it does the trick, but it's been around for uh, hundreds of years. <laughs> you know, even Napoleon used this allegedly when he was amongst us. So I highly recommend 4711 for Coachella. It is just also quiet luxury a little bit. You know what I mean? If we're kind of playing in that, I know Coachella has nothing to do with quiet luxury, but there's ways to stand out of the crowd, even at Coachella, by, you know, smelling fresher than everybody else without being too snotty about it. Now, the next one um, is more for the nighttime. Okay, so I would highly recommend this one if you do want to stand out. And especially if you've been partying and dancing all day, then you had something to eat, and then, you know, the best gigs are at night when the sun goes down. People are, I don't know in which part of the areas you're allowed to smoke or not smoke or what you're allowed to use or not use, but let's say you're in some area outdoors where you are allowed to smoke potentially or not. I don't know how it goes there at the moment. I just watched Debbie Harry, aka Blondie, the other night uh, at Coachella, dressed completely in H.R. Giger inspired alien attire and with the backdrop being H.R. Giger artworks. Oh my God, it was everything. So I thought to myself, the best perfume for that occasion has to be something strong, something that comes from the 70s, but kind of blasts itself into the future. Uh, to me, <laughs> if there's a party, it needn't be disco, honey, and it needn't be indoors. But if there's a party, you best believe I'm going to wear opium. Uh, opium by Yves Saint Laurent. I know, I mean, you yeah, guys, this is the quintessential party. I want to say drug, but it's a perfume. It's the quintessential party perfume. This is the one. This is the one you're going to wear to to dance the night away because it's musky, it's uh, animalic, it's sexual, sensual. It gives you the right stamina, you know, and it's very attractive when it's mixed with a little bit of sweat and a little bit of smoke in the air. And uh, the smoke can also be smoke from the stage. You know, as performers are performing, they kind of blast that smoke, that performance smoke. <laughs> this is really, really good for that. Um, uh, opium and uh, Coachella, baby. They go hand in hand if you want something intense. Now, on another note, and this is a very, very particular perfume I'm going to show you now. And it took me a while thinking about like, okay, mm, which one would fit for bear with me, creating memories. Yeah, you heard me. You heard me right. To create memories while you are, let's say, you're young, youthful, youthful. So biologically doesn't mean you're young biologically. You just feel young, okay? You're youthful and you want to create really good memories. You're going with your friends to Coachella. You're going to spend the weekend there. You're going to be dancing the night away. You're going to be losing control. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to meet a person that you're really into. You're going to be making out on the fields. You're going to be disappearing in the backsides of places to do a little bit more of something. Then you're going to be coming back. It's going to be an emotional roller coaster ride and also a hormonal roller coaster ride. And I was thinking to myself, Jacob, what would be the perfume that one would wear as the best base to build memories on top of. Catch my drift? A perfume that is most suited for creating a sort of an emotional tabula rasa 
<coughs> pardon me, I have a cold, as you've probably noticed, so I'm going to be, my throat is going to be going <coughs> all the time. So, a perfume that is going to be the best base to build cool memories on top of, but it has to be a perfume that at the same time is not going to be too hooked to those memories so that you can use that perfume again for other occasions to build other memories. Took me a minute. Took me a minute, but I figured it out. The best perfume for that occasion, believe it or not, in my humble opinion, is hmm, Bel Respiro by Chanel. This one, <coughs> pardon me, this one is just uh, divine. I mean, <laughs> that grassy, slightly resinous mm, musty accord is... It's a promise of spring and summer, but it is also slightly sweaty and hormonal. And it's very, very good. This thing, Bel Respiro, it also means uh, Bel Respiro. It's, like, it's in Italian. I mean, it, it's one of Coco's villas that she used to own in the south of France on the coast. But, uh, it, but still, it's an Italian word. And Bel Respiro means a beautiful breath or a breath of fresh air. Really, that's what it means. And uh, it is a breath of fresh air. So to wear something like this at Coachella, hands down, the best one. Now, I coincidentally have an Eau de Parfum here with me, uh, but I do prefer the Eau de Toilette if you can hunt it down. But uh, EDP is also uh, growing on me more and more. You know, there's warmth in here. Uh, it's, it's a warmer version of Bel Respiro, and I am getting more and more into it. The EDT is one of the loves of my life, but um, current formula of the EDP is not bad. This is batch code 7401, if you're interested. The best one to build memories on top of while at some cool festival like Coachella with your friends or with your lovers. Now, the next one is the opposite of this. It's about innocence and uh, more innocent vibes, playful vibes, because Coachella is not just about, I don't know, it's not just about uh, the, you know, the horny tension, although it is mostly about that. But it's also about music for the sake of music, for the love of music, for the love of having some good times together in the desert. Uh, and it's also innocent in a way. You know, you can also find moments at Coachella where there's just beauty all around you without the need for showing off, without the need to... You know how it is. A lot of influencers and starlets go to Coachella and they try to have different outfits every day and they try to show off and like, I don't know, be crazier than the, than the next one. And it's just all cringe at the end of the day. But there's also those people, and that those are my kind of people, that just enjoy the, the time together and don't really care about flashy looks, right? So there's an innocence to that. And I think the best perfume for that occasion, I'm also going to show you the best size that you can carry with you. It's the perfect size to take with you to Coachella. And that would be Moschino's Teddy Bear. Uh, it's Moschino's Toy 2 Bubblegum. It's the bubblegum version of Moschino's perfume in the 10 ml uh, bottle. So, of course, you can have a ginormous glass bottle, like the 50 mil, uh, 100 mil. But there is also this tiny version in 10 mil, like a, a 10 milliliter vial. Is it 10 mil or is it 20 mil? I think it's 10 mil. 10 mil. And it's the smell of bubblegum with jasmine, a bit of roses. Is it synthetic? Of course it is. I mean, bubblegum perfume. But I think this is adorable. First of all, it's a great conversation starter to have this little thing. While you're dancing, you can keep it in your arms and just be like, yes, queen. <laughs> so it's a really, really cute little gidget accessory to have while you're having fun. Little pink teddy bear. Um, but also it does smell of bubblegum, jasmine, and roses and a bit of vanilla. So it's, it's a sweet, innocent, fun 
fun and playful perfume. This is great for a festival, especially for Coachella. Plus the color is adorable. Barbie pink and silver. I mean, you can't go wrong with this at Coachella. You seriously can't. So I highly recommend the tiny version of Bubblegum by Moschino. So then there's a more spiritual approach, right, to, to Coachella. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who go there to do mushrooms or, you know, some stuff and have some sort of form of enlightenment uh, while they're listening to their favorite music. The perfume needs to match. The perfume needs to match. And I think we need to delve into incense for that. You gotta listen. You can't go to a music festival in the middle of the desert where you're literally camping in a tent without incense, right? You can burn some incense and have that spiritual feel or vibe. But if you don't have the whole kit to set up to, to burn your incenses, you can just do it in perfume form. My favorite incenses in perfume form uh, are from Comme des Garçons. And my favorite one for the occasion would be Jassal Mer from the incense series. The, there are five of, uh, of incenses uh, by Comme des Garçons. But Jassalmer is my favorite one because it's the sweetest one. It's, it's less austere and church-like. But uh, nevertheless, it's, uh, it's very clearly incense, but it is much more um, fun playful. It's not just a serious religious incense. It is a spiritual incense with a twist. It has a zesty twist, a fun, playful twist, but it's somber enough to still be respectable as an incense. But it's, I think this, is, well, this one is gorgeous for fun times. It's a gorgeous incense to wear while experiencing slightly spiritual moments with your friends at a festival like Coachella. Highly recommend it. Oh, those mushroom trips while I was on Jassal Mer. Anyway, that's a really good one. Now, the next one is for all the old timers. <laughs> and also not for the old timers. But actually, the funny thing is, I just realized that the 80s are kind of considered old times now, which is ridiculous if you think about it. But by old timers, I mean those people that envision a concept of a perfume as we've been used to seeing portrayed in ad campaigns, very much so from the mid 80s all the way to the mid 90s, Calvin Klein was master at portraying this Americana lifestyle by the beach, wearing oversized knit sweaters. So I'm envisioning this, but in the desert without water, but you're still in the sandy environment. And you know, in the desert, it gets pretty cold at night, really hot during the day. So you're going to want to wear some gorgeous knit sweater, like oversized, that just like hanging on one side with a thick knit, feeling your Calvin Klein late 80s perfume ad campaign vibes. And so add to that the need for some extra warmth during a festival like that during, you know, a gig that's playing some music that brings you back. I mean, listen, Blondie performed the other day. And, and I mean, you know, Blondie is also a huge, huge moment of the 70s and 80s. So what was really big in the 80s, in the mid 80s, that brings us back to this whole vibe of wearing oversized knits during the nighttime? It's, it's the one and only, it's Obsession by Calvin Klein. I mean, first of all, Coachella is the obsession of many, many people. <laughs> but mm, this thing is such a desert vibe. Like, I think, I think the sandy moment and the dust and dirt moment with Obsession is just the best thing ever. I mean, I envision, you know, the ad campaigns of, uh, you know, Kate Moss, totally nude in the 80s for Obsession for Men in particular and for Obsession. And just that vibe of like, I don't need anything, you know, you're just like completely bare in the middle of that festival, just enjoying your, feeling your oats and enjoying yourself. And you, and you need some amber, like an amber accord to set the tone Oh my gosh, this thing like, it is an 80s perfume, but it's it's built around a concept of passing of time and of the past. And so it also, when you smell it, gives you total vibes of uh, hippie communes, uh, also Woodstock vibes. It, uh, 
it came way after Woodstock, but the way this perfume is constructed, it smells of memory, of freedom. It's kind of the smell of memory of freedom. And so that's why I connected also to Woodstock, uh, even though it was formulated much later. And it's just uh, a divine amber uh, for, for festivals. Coachella and Obsession by Calvin Klein in the Eau de Parfum form. Hands down, like this thing um, is perfect for that scenario. Little ambery moment. And the good thing about this one is nowadays it's a cheapie. You can find it for a really good price. I got my 100 mil bottle for like $15 on Amazon. So you got to get lucky, you know. Then... Because the prices vary, they go up, they fluctuate, they go up and down all the time. Then the next one is for the youth that wants to party. It's a very youthful one, and it's very, I want to say, over the top, intense in closed environments, but in open environments, it gives you a very flirtatious vibe. And it is definitely a party perfume. And uh, the perfume is from Dior. Mine has aged really nicely. <laughs> Look at the liquid turned black. It's Poison Girl Eau de Parfum. This is the first batch ever released. Um, the liquid, when you buy it new, the liquid is kind of pink, but it has a lot of vanilla in it. So look at this thing. It turned black. It's insane. This is how the first batch of Poison Girl turns after some time. It knocks you out. This thing is so intense. <laughs> this is a this is a vanilla bomb. I mean, you guys, can we talk? Woo! Okay, this one is particularly good also in environments where people are smoking. So I don't condone smoking, obviously, but I'm just saying, if you're partying, something like that might come to happen. Um and this one bonds really well with tobacco. Uh, just saying. It is such a party perfume. Oh my gosh. This is a party perfume. Great for sweating it out. Dancing, sweating. This thing combines with your body in such a good way. This is the quintessential party perfume. Even though it looks super poisonous. But hey, it is called Poison Girl after all. And it's, it's very youthful, you know. It's kind of Dior's version of poison for the younger generations, even though any age can wear this. Mm, such a party perfume. This thing is gorgeous. Sipping on a cocktail, on a drink, dancing, sweating. And like this thing, and I've been to parties. Well, I mean, you can see I've worn my poison girl and I've only worn it to parties. And I, I can tell you this, this thing smells better and better the more you're dancing and the more you're sweating. So it's perfection for Coachella, for Coachella. Perfection. The next one is kind of the perfume that most invigorates you of all of these. Why am I saying this? Well, you're going to be dancing a lot. I don't know what pills you're going to be doing. I don't know what you're going to be taking. But sometimes the queue for the drink booth is really long and it's really hard to get a coffee. You know, you need a little pick-me-up that's legal. <laughs> so you want to buy a coffee. It's really hard to get a coffee. It's, it's hard to get any sort of sustenance while you're at Coachella if you're on that kind of basic entry-level price ticket, right? So I was thinking about choosing one perfume that would be based on coffee. So I know you're not going to drink the perfume, duh, but the smell of it, it's going to invigorate you. And uh, also, we're in the middle of the desert, people are dressing up as aliens, flying around, you know what I mean? It's that whole vibe of like, I believe, very um, uh, X-Files. <laughs> we're waiting for the aliens to come and get us while we're listening to music in the middle of the desert, and we need a coffee. Nothing better than Mugler, honey, nothing better. Amen. This baby here, this is it. This is your coffee dream. This is your coffee dream for Coachella. It, it gives you a boost. It's also a gorgeous party perfume. This thing is intense. It's going to last on your skin for like the whole day. As, and, and as you're sweating, it, it smells very erotic. It's very sensual. It's going to attract people from everywhere. I mean, you know, we don't like to talk about panty droppers, but... 
trust you me. The original Amen. You don't need any flankers. You don't need any limited editions. Just get your original. Mine is the Eau de Toilette. In the rubber. It's a glass bottle, but it's covered with rubber. So even if it falls, it's kind of protected. This thing is like perfection for for going uh, to parties. Yeah, it's like caoutchouc. Uh, it's it's a rubber cover. It's one of the first perfumes ever made like this. It's really, really gorgeous. And perfect for Coachella. Are you kidding me? That zesty coffee with a little bit of rum undertone. It's like drinking a boost drink while you're dancing. It's like Red Bull or mate tea or leaves or something, you know, in, in, a, in a bottle. It's really, really good. Very invigorating and very, very sexy. So... That's the one. That's our number nine. Number 10. I kept this one for last because I think it's the quintessential Coachella perfume. And we've seen one of the most famous actors promote this fragrance. Coincidentally, he promoted it in the desert with wolves um, and fires at night and music and he's walking with a guitar. It almost looks as though he was on a stage performing at Coachella and then jumps off the stage and goes into the desert to dance with wolves. You best believe it's Johnny Depp, honey. And you best believe for Coachella, honey. Sauvage. And I particularly chose Eau de Parfum. I chose Eau de Parfum. Uh, not the Eau de Toilette or the Parfum or the Elixir. I have all of them in my collection, but it's the Eau de Parfum for Coachella. Uh, this is a 200 ml bottle. <laughs> you don't need the ginormous bottle. You could get a 60 ml bottle. You know, they have smaller bottles of it. But uh, so Sauvage, Johnny Depp, I mean, literally the ad campaign is... Coachella, literally, you know, Johnny in the nightfall in the desert with the wolves and his guitar. It is a moment. It is a moment in time and it is a so, and it is so divine. A moment in time, so divine, imperfect rhyme. So um I can tell you. Ollie's saying in the chats, I bet there's a lot of Sauvage at Coachella. Yes, probably, but I can tell you. The Eau de Parfum is best for this occasion because it lingers without being too aggressive, but it's just right. And it's sweeter than the other uh, concentrations. It has a sweeter accord that makes it a little bit more friendly, less aggressive, but still very distinct. And yes, probably a bunch of people are going to wear it. But then again, a bunch of people are all dancing in the same rhythm. You know, there's a lot of... Um, conformity as well at these festivals because i mean when your favorite band is playing on the stage everybody knows the songs by heart everybody knows the dance moves by heart if that band happens to have a video clip with dancing in it so you're kind of conforming right you're uniforming yourself everybody's going to be you know dancing in the same way if you're loving all the same uh, artists you're going to be dressing like them so chances are a bunch of people are going to be wearing sauvage but you know what it's great let them. It's a it's a great, great youthful fragrance. Um, it's a little bit over the top, you know. The Ambroxan in here can be super obnoxious. Yes, we all know it. People either love this one or hate this one. I love it and I hate it at the same time. It's that douchebag that I love to hate. It's that douchebag that I love to hate. What can I tell you? It's that one night stand that you feel embarrassed when you're doing your walk of shame the next morning. You're like, did I really? have sex with that person yet again. I promised myself I would never do it again. And then you end up doing it again because as they say, <laughs> good dick is a prison. Anyway, you guys, so that was my Coachella lineup. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your top 10 for Coachella or in general, like any music festival. If you were to be gone for a weekend or for five days and you're just kind of tenting somewhere, what perfumes would you take? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Never forget to never give up on love and subscribe. Thumb up the video. Bye.